I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over real quick three concepts. Now, here's the thing to remember. These are very much core, fundamental Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu concepts. They're not, oh, this stuff Cecil took from someplace else and we're going to use here. These are very much core Jiu-Jitsu concepts. The problem is sometimes we forget them. Right? Not that I don't think you know them, because I know Michael. I've been working with him for like you know six years. I know what he teaches. I know what you get out of this gym. But sometimes we can forget. Okay? So the first concept, one of the fundamental drivers for jujitsu is don't let him control you and you put your control onto him. Okay, everybody understand that concept, right? I, I want to minimize his control over me and I want to maximize my control over him, right? Everybody, we probably also heard the term submission before, uh, pow, <laughs> position before submission, right? Good to, it's good, I like the phrase, it's very easy to, to grasp. The problem is it's, it leaves a little nebulous stuff floating around, okay? It's not quite as defined as it should be. The idea is not just position, it's positional control is what we're looking for here, Mike. So, let's look at this. So put me in closed guard, please. All right, so I'm in closed guard, right? Look at right now. So I've got a really good base. My knees are spread properly, my butt to my heels, my posture, head over spine, spine vertical. My elbows are inside my hip line. I've got some pressure, some control over his hips and his upper body, right? Who has good control right now? Me, right? Exactly. This is what I should be doing, right? I've got, I'm leading the dance at this point in this position, right? But watch, uh, put me in my high guard. Okay, now look. He's broken my posture. My base is off because I can't, my, my butt's not fully sunk to my heels. I, I don't have that control. My posture sucks. Where's my elbows and arms? In a really bad position. Okay, so who's in control? Mike. Mike. Now, did we change position? No, it's the same exact position. Closed guard. We didn't change position. But based on who has control, who's maximizing their control and minimizing the other guy's control changes who's controlling the fight, okay? So we're always looking for that. Minimize his, maximize yours. And that applies everywhere. It applies when you're holding guard, applies when you're inside guard, applies when you're on top, applies when you're on the bottom. So uh, put me in uh, side control, please. So, you know, typical panicky um, guy who doesn't do jujitsu, who doesn't understand the ground, he finds himself on the ground, right? Okay, is this, who's in control right here? Michael. Right. I, my head and neck is completely free to attacks, chokes, strikes. My arms are out of the fight almost totally. He can easily wrap them up to attack them. Mm -hmm. He can shift to any superior position. And there's not much I can do about it. He's keeping my upper body pinned. My hips only have minimal movement, okay? But watch, now let's... We'll make a change. We'll keep the same position, but now watch what happens. Who has control here? He still has more, but does he have as much? No. No, right? My head, but move your arms just for a second. So my hands are up, so my head's more protected. My neck's protected. My head, if he starts striking, I can do something. My arms are not open for him to immediately attack. I can start using them to help protect me if he tries to switch to mount or knee on belly or roll me over. I can start to use this to create more space to get out, right? So again, did the position change? But my, but my options from A to B were completely different, right? So we're always looking every situation possible. We're always looking maximize your control, minimize his. Make sense? Yeah. And again, we've, this is, I'm sure I'm sure you've said this. Maybe use a different phrasing or, or you emphasize it slightly different, but it's, it's core jujitsu. But sometimes we kind of forget, right? We, you know, 
sometimes we get a little lazy, right? Let's say you've been, it's Thursday night or something and you're Friday night training, you've been working all week, you work your day job and you there's a long week and you've already trained two or three times that week and now you're rolling and you're 45 minutes an hour in and you're rolling with a guy who's better than you, you're kind of wiped out, right, sometimes. So sometimes you just go, eh, I'm going to, I'm going to be as lazy as possible. I'm going to conserve my energy. I always use that excuse. No, 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 Meg. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm just conserving my energy. I'm letting the guy mount me because I'm conserving my energy. <laughs> um, so it's very understandable that that happens, right? It's, it's understandable that we can, I don't want to say lazy, but, you know, we're trying to <clears throat> maximize our efforts to conserve energy. <laughs> The problem, though, is you fight like you train, right? If you approach things subconsciously that way, that it's okay to be lazy at times, that it's okay to, to play the conservation game, well, unfortunately, that might come out at the wrong time. You make a mental mistake. Anybody compete? And ever made a mental mistake in a match and it cost you? I, certainly, I lost. I lost. I lost the gold medal at nationals in July because I made a dumb, dumb mistake to start the fight. An idiotic mistake against a guy who should not have made the mistake, and I and I lost the match because of it. Right? I started three a minute and a half in. I started two points down, and I never caught up, even though I had like three or four advantages. It was stupid. Right? We do that. That can happen. Here's the problem. In if we be lazy, if we make that error when we're training, eh, no big deal, right? Slap hands. Oh man, he got me. Good job, dude. And then your head, okay, I'm gonna come after you next week when I feel better, right? In a tournament, it sucks, right? You know, I take home the silver. Yay. Ugh. Threw that in the back of the car as I was driving home. Blech. Well, silvers are good, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you wanted the other one, right? Right. After, after, after. right? Afterwards, you're like, silver's cool, but yeah. I know. <laughs> um, especially when it's a guy against a guy you know you should have beat. Yeah. That was mine. Um, and it's but it's okay, right? It, it's not. It doesn't cost you anything. The problem is in a self-defense situation, in a life or death situation, that mistake might cost you everything. Yeah, you don't want to get silver in the fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, Silver's I'm going to edit that part out because I'm stealing that line and I'm going to say it's mine. You don't get credit for it. <laughs> but that's true. You can. And here's the problem. This is why I'm making a point to talk about it, this now instead of all we all go sweat and Cecil will show us some techniques. is because I want you to be able to say this in training. To say, if you make that decision, hey, I need to, I'm tired, I'm worn out, I'm sore, I gotta play a little bit lazier, that's cool. But say it in your head. Make that switch, hey, I'm going to do this consciously because I need to, to get through the rest of training. But this is not what I wanna do when I'm serious, right? As long as we can make that conscious switch, it's okay. My fear though, because I know this is true, is that it becomes subconscious. And when things aren't going your way, you go to the panic. You go to that unthinking result. And if you are always doing the, when you're rolling, that's what's gonna happen when you have to fight for your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so, so we're always, no matter what, minimize his control, maximize your, got it? Yeah. 